Now we're going to take a look at this new choke that I kind of just stumbled on while training. There's not really a name for it. I refer to it as the lazy turtle choke. Not because I'm lazy on top, but because the person that went to their knees went there to rest. You see that a lot from people that are really large or people that have bad cardio. They know that they need to defend the guard pass uh, and then they, they stall out and turtle. They don't play an aggressive attacking turtle or they don't turn back to guard. This is a great place to get that choke. All right. I also pair it with the sneaky choke, which was a previous video. You can check that out and you'll see that you have the grips already when they start to come to their knees. We're going to look at it just from the turtle position first. Okay, so Mike's in turtle. Uh, he's slowed down. Maybe this is three or four minutes into the match, and he's trying to catch a breather here. Big mistake. This is sort of a modified uh, clock choke or um, one of those quick kill chokes where the hand comes in front of the shoulder. This will be a difficult thing to get. But what you'll find is that as you get this, people are very hesitant to allow your body to turn in or reach over to get that second grip on the clock. Getting your grips can be the most difficult thing, okay? So what I like to do is I like to control this inside leg for a number of reasons. If he tries to sit back to guard, I want to be ahead of the game. I want to have a little bit of control of that leg. I can hop over or I can stuff his legs. Very common. So uh, the hand's going to start back here on the pant grip. Hand up front is going to come uh, up into the collar just like I would for any type of clock choke. Now, my second hand the one that is back here on the pants is going to come under here and control. A lot of times I'll have good base on him here and I'm going to wait to see how he moves. If he doesn't move, that hand can come in. Turn so you can see. So you can see the hand was here on the pants. This is a very important grip and I'm tight. When I go to get my second grip um, with my hand, it's going to come off the pants and it's going to reach to the inside. The good news is you still get a good bit of control with this hand in front of the leg. If I go to transfer and he goes to sit into guard, turn towards me, I still get to block that leg and turn in. So that hand isn't losing control of the leg, it's still doing that job, it's just doing it from a different position. So when I transfer from the pant grip, I'm going to come uh, thumb towards the belt and I'm going to grab the near collar. All right? Most of the time, uh, people are used to you reaching all the way over to get that collar. This hand has a very, very, very important job. Okay? Not only when I grab that collar, Am I going to push it towards the belt? I'm also going to pull it out. All right? When I push towards the belt, you need to remember that the whole collar is connected. So if I push towards the belt here, it tightens up that whole collar all the way over to that thumb grip that I already have in the collar. Now, once I push towards the belt, I'm going to pull out so that my wrist comes out close to the back of the tricep, and I'm going to lead with my elbow underneath the body. This, or excuse me, in front of the bicep. It will push itself underneath the body. It's very important that we do that because we need to trap this arm. Not only so that the collar remains tight, but so that when I roll to my side, I don't allow him to come back on top of me. Otherwise, you'll just be throwing yourself right into side control. I haven't really had this go bad yet, if you have a tight grip up here. So I'm gonna do it two or three times without the grips, and then uh, I'll show you what the grips are so that you can get in here. So here, hand. Right? I'm going to pivot this knee around the front of his face and my elbow is going to come underneath the body. When the elbow comes underneath the body, my leg is going to go on top of the head. A lot of people will think that this is what's choking him. This leg has nothing to do with choking them and when they try to take this leg off the head, you're still going to choke them. But it does help kill their posture and, and give them something to focus on. It gives you an extra barrier of defense when they want to try to fight back. So I'm controlling the pant leg, I've got my hand in the collar, my hand comes to the lapel, and I'm trumpeting it towards the hips. Watch when I rotate underneath the body and this one comes underneath, now I bring this up and I'm going to pull with the hand that's by the neck. We're going to look at it at a couple different angles and then I'll show it to you live. So that, that lazy turtle choke, boom, the hand comes into the collar, I'm still blocking the pant grip, okay? I'm not lazy on my, my knees, I'm, I'm putting some pressure into him. I always want to be ready if he's going to try and sit into guard. That hand by the pants is going to come to the inside lapel, and you can see when I pull on it, look at how it built, um, stiffens this. That's what we want, all right? Now when I rotate, that's going to come under and this leg's going to go on top. One more time. Rotate, pivot, look at how that elbow leads. I'll scoop my body all the way underneath him, leg over top, and I'll pull with that hand. Pants, lapel, near lapel, trumpet. Turn, look at how that elbow went across the bicep, okay? 
leg over top of the head, and I pull here. One, control, pressure. Hand to the lapel. I'm going to rotate my body, leg over top. So let's look at it live. It will be a lot easier for you to spin and rotate when you do it quickly. All right? Leg's going to come over the head. I'm going to lead with the elbow. One, control, underneath, under, and over top. So you can see that I'm throwing my body. But this is your lifeline. The elbow has to be pushing on the front of the bicep. If I don't get to finish the choke, right? I, I can't finish the choke. You've got a couple options. I can push with the elbow and I can push them over top of me. Back up. Or you keep that elbow pushed, you belly back down, and you come back up on top. It's important that you really get that spin right here and that you push the elbow underneath the body. Um, a lot of people haven't seen this. Make sure you drill it and rep it before you do it live. I don't want you to get caught inside control from a good position.